with us right now, uh, a, a former guest. I'm going to have to look and see what the, the, the number or the episode number was. Um, back again, Rob Brayman from Cogent Analytics. Uh, you're found on the web at CogentAnalytics.com. Rob, how have you been? Josh, doing great. Thanks for having me back on the show today. So uh, since we've chatted last time, tell me about what's gone on uh, in your world over the past year. Oh, good gosh. You know, the pandemic, I think, has profoundly affected most small business owners across the country. You know, large business owners got quite a bit of relief. You know, small business owners were able to tap into the PPP funds. Um, but even in that, uh, we probably have only 70 or 75 percent of clients that we represented truly take advantage of PPP funds that were available. It's yeah. a little disappointing if you think about oh, the totally. small business owner, right? You'll never see money that cheap again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and you know, it's funny. We have a lot of clients that that really spend through, right? They were not as frugal. You know, revenues were dropping. They really didn't manage their cash burn rate in the business. They were able to navigate the waters through the, you know, the acceptance of the PPP. But remember, Josh, we've lost one of the single greatest culling of small businesses in America has been over the last 16 months, which is a shame, right? You, you represent small business owners. I represent small business owners. And, it, and it's always, you know, it touches my heart a little bit when I think about the number of families that were attached to that story, right? Small business is comprised typically of somebody with good heart and good spirit and good drive, and they want to build a business of their own accord, and they hire some people and they get off the ground, and then and then we're hit with this pandemic. And I just, for me, uh, you know, I think the impact to all of the American families through those loss of those small businesses. So sorry for a drone on response, but no. um, definitely affected me personally, you know, when I look at our clients. Yeah. Hey, um, so in terms of, let's talk about PPP really quick, because there was first round uh, and hopefully most people got that. Um, then there was second round that I think, I don't think a lot of people, well, at least I, I didn't realize until the very end that uh, that I qualified, I applied, but by the time I had applied, they said, sorry, we're out of money. <laughs> That's right. And, yeah. you know, there, there, there actually is still PPP funds, although the fund is closed. Believe yeah. it or not, all of those funds will just be repatriated. But, you know, there were a lot of people that stood on the sidelines with that second round of PPP yeah. because they're like, I feel okay. Yes, because there's a little bit of money in the bank and they, and they, it was almost a psychology, Josh, of, of people, you know, fearful of doing the wrong thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they know they had gotten the PPP and gotten relief from that. And the second round, because they were feeling okay, right. what they didn't take into consideration is that the overall marketplace really hasn't come fully back to full swing. Although our country's doing much, much better. Don't, yeah. please don't allow your listeners to hear me the other way, right? So it is coming back, but you still have a cash drain on a business, right? If revenues are not as strong as they should be, you know, your ability to staff up and be prepared for that next burgeon of the marketplace coming back because growth costs money, right? And we're experiencing that on a firsthand basis where clients see their revenues going up and all of a sudden their receivables start to climb and their inventories start to climb again. And that second round of PPP would have been really helpful to, to be able to reinvest in the upward swing of yes. the business. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. So um, I don't know if you kind of keep tabs on the SBA and headlines. I mean, that's we're, we are we pre we're pretty much done, right? Unless like, I think there's like some restaurant funds available. Like there's some- That's correct. Yeah, some things still available out there, right? A, a little. We're recording yeah. this. I need to say uh, things change day to day. Um, we're recording this June 10th. So again, if things have changed since this episode's been released, it is what it is. Uh, check, check, check your, check, go to the SBA's website and you can find out the latest guidance. But as of right now, June 10th, Rob, uh, where are we at? That's really good counsel, right? And we find ourselves checking the SBA website 
as frequently as once a day. You know, yeah. there was a period of time where it could be once a week or maybe once every 10 days. But, you know, as opposed to misspeaking, there are some limited relief still available. I think what Congress is attempting to do now is reinvesting back in things like infrastructure, which, yes. again, is the revenue side. It is about putting more people back to work or creating opportunities for small business owners in the form of bidding good work that's coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure we can all appreciate, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, the dysfunction sometimes of, of Congress or the length of time that takes to actually come to good policy is longer than I think we'd all like. And that's a market condition that especially affects the small business owner. You know, if we're, if you're not abreast of what's happening in your marketplace, or you're not abreast of opportunities that may be coming available because planning, Josh, you and I have had this philosophical conversation many times, right? Planning in the small business center is a behavior that, you know, if I can beat that drum one more time today, you know, planning for market condition, planning for positives as is important as planning for some adversities that you see in the marketplace, like, you know, positive being you have an opportunity to bid an in, to some of the infrastructure work that happens. Right. Because what most people don't consider is when, when you invest in infrastructure that creates jobs, those results then feed into the service industry and in, in the form of people going to eat at restaurants and hire services that are ancillary to the prime service. So, you know, when I, when I, I'd like to encourage your, your listeners to think about the ripple effect from investing in infrastructure and things that happen there and what will happen at the community level, right? And that also supports the tax base. And I know we all hate to talk about taxes, but it also supports the tax base. And most Americans are not aware of some of the real challenges that states are having in supporting some of the work that they've earmarked. I've got a client right now, if you don't mind the anecdotal, a client right now that was awarded a fairly nice um, municipal bid and the municipality has not pulled the trigger on that bid. And this is a story that you will hear over and over and over and over again, where that bid is just sitting on the shelf. They've already been awarded the work, but haven't been awarded the opportunity to start doing the work. So, you know, the impact is there is a ripple effect throughout our economy when we think when we have discussions, you and I like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, and, and this should be said, right, and I could have alluded to this already, is that um, when you have this much money that's being injected into the economy, and I'm not talking about the the loans and the, the, the you know, relief funds and all that. I'm talking about the infrastructure money. Um that provides so many ancillary opportunities. Even if you don't build bridges and highways and all that sort of thing, guess what? When you've got all these projects that are getting underway, how can you jump in and support? What can you do, right? So I think it's the smart business owner. And I think like when I think about, you know, everyone that I've interviewed over the past year, year and a half, the ones that adapted and pivoted quickly, who said, wait a minute, there's a major disruption going on right now. I can help. I, I have an idea on how I can help based on some new needs that are taking place in the marketplace right now. Those folks, wow, boy, have really they done good business. Council. That's yeah. right. And I, I was really council. heartened. Rob, I actually thought of you a long uh, while ago. I remember seeing a statistic that, you know, just along with this idea is that, um, and this was sometime about a year ago, or maybe just under a year ago, that the um, SBA or some, some small business organization, you know, did, did some research amongst all their members and said, have you shut down, kept things, not a single thing has changed, or have you changed in some major way to adapt to new opportunities or new challenges? And overwhelmingly, like 80 plus percent has said, uh, we adapted. And I, that, when I read that, gotta I gotta love human spirit. I, that I got so emotional and so proud of, of the small business community who said, you know what? 
damn it, even if they don't do the right things in DC, I'm going to step up. Man, this was like almost like an Atlas Shrugged kind of moment, right? Where it's like, we are going to step forward and we are going to fix this problem. And that's what I have way more faith in, you know, in the small business community, uh, you know, in, in our country and beyond uh, than, than I do <laughs> politicians. Well, that, I don't the, think I'm the, alone in that. <laughs> no, the best, you know, the best part about the American spirit has always been when you get to the root, you know, we're, we have not historically been red or blue. We live in an odd period of totally. time. And I think you're touching on it, right? We haven't been red or blue. We are red, white, and blue, which means we are American first. And the and especially the entrepreneurial spirit, right? And I did, a, I did another show specifically talking about adversity breeds innovation. And, you know, we've seen it throughout our entire client base where, you know, there was always a percentage of people at the front end of COVID who were, and I, I say with italics, stuck, right? They weren't sure whether to go right, go left, you know, what behaviors needed to change in their business? How were they going to pursue business development differently? How many of their people could they retain? Did I need to change my process a bit? What had to happen in my measurement or financial management that was going on in my company? So I protected the core of my company, who I am and what I'm trying to build. And, you know, oddly that, you know, from March to about July, August last year, mm -hmm. there was a lot of psychology going on there where people, you know, you had fear, you had the unknown, you had adversity, you had revenues being affected. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a segment of business that did exceptionally well during, during COVID, right? Opportunity provided itself and small business owners stepped up and filled the breach. The other half of it really is that innovation spirit that you're talking about. And I, I, I can't tell you, I share your belief. I was incredibly proud of looking at the average American community and, and especially the entrepreneurial community and what it took because entrepreneurs really get up in the morning and they think about their employees. They think about their customers. They think about their vendors. You know, that is not a, that's not an idle thing for a small business owner. And it's different for big business, right? Entrepreneurs, this is about family. This is about my life savings sometimes, right? I put mm -hmm. my whole life savings into my business. And, you know, Josh, you and I, you and I have talked many times. Philosophically, I believe that small business owners, when I talk about the profit platform or the pillars or our approach to business, you know, that that's really the fundamental approach that, I, I mean, again, keep beating the drum. You've got to be able to generate revenues and re whether revenues are falling or going up, that behavior of generating revenues and developing people and having good process in place along with measurements. So measurements is about empowering yourself and people so that you can navigate those adverse waters, right? If you're not generating a profit, you're not generating cash flow. If you're not generating cash flow, you're not obligating, you know, you're not maintaining your obligations to the bank. You're not maintaining your obligations to growth, which you and I just talked about. And moreover, the business owner, you and I of the world, right? There's no distribution. When you get done paying tax and you get done paying debt and you get paying, debt, done paying for growth or capital expenditures going to business, that's where a distribution, you only get what's left over, right? So when we preach good business practice, it really isn't around the profit platform, right? That's that easy communication device. And I absolutely will tell every one of your listeners, if you're a small business owner today, you know, look at your business, step back occasionally instead of just working in it and work on it because that's where, that's where you're really getting the message out to the team and you're setting a vision or a spirit or a culture to your company. So again, sorry for the drone on, I apologize. No, 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 I, listen, I wanna leave enough time for you to explain what, we just have a few minutes left, but uh, if you could explain a little bit about who Cogent Analytics is, who's a great client for you, um, you know, and, and you know, the problem you solve and, and what, what that next step for that person would be. We're, we're business advisors, Josh, right? We represent Main Street America. We are wholly dedicated to the entrepreneur community. So whether you're a startup, we usually look at our, at our bottom floor at about $200,000. We have a, a virtual group that does a lot of 
Zoom calls or team meetings where we're working on really complex issues with our clients, but we do it on a more abbreviated basis. That's tantamount to some coaching and really tangible implementation of good systems approach to a business, right? We mm. teach business owners how to be better business owners. As we say, you've got to manage the business of the business, not just the business that you do. Now, on the little larger scale, that $2 million client to $200 million client, those dynamics are always different client to client. But we put out a theory many, many years ago called the Profit Platform. And if anybody has interest, go to www.cogenanalytics.com. And we have a number of illustrations about our approach and our philosophical approach to business, which is business development, organizational engineering, process engineering, and measurement. Measurement is financial and operational. And we think that's what drives profit. So if you're a small business owner and you think, you know, gosh, I had a good year, but maybe my profit's not as robust. It's not benchmarked against my competition. I think I'm not performing on the top end of the scale. I think I'm an average or maybe a little bit below. Our sole focus, our sole focus, Josh, is helping business owners realize their best opportunity because that has an impact on their business, right? That's going to, in fact, impact their own family and the families of the employees or the opportunities in job expansion that they might have in their company. That's really the core of who we are. Yeah, yeah. So your website, Rob, Cogent analytics.com. You got a big team. Like you guys are no we joke. Did. Inc 5,000. Like you, I mean, Cogent is uh, trusted by many. <laughs> you guys have done excellent, excellent work. We've been friends for uh, gosh, probably getting on two years, pretty easy. I yeah, two years almost more. three, Josh. Yeah. yeah three. Yeah. Three. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gone by quickly. All right. Cogent analytics.com. Rob Brayman. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Great conversation. I, Josh, again, I appreciate you having me on. And, and folks, being an entrepreneur is the greatest blessing and greatest opportunity, right? And I say kudos to all of your listeners who have taken the leap into entrepreneurship because it truly is the backbone of our company. Thank you for having me on today.